Welcome to the Business of Platforms, a video podcast series where Vivaldi will be chatting with the world's leading marketers, thinkers, and innovators about the evolution of business and the exciting ways in which platforms are helping companies and brands deliver greater value. Vivaldi is the Global Growth Consultancy, and we decided to create this podcast series centered around the business of platforms because we believe that anything that can become a platform will become a platform. And as more and more of the world becomes digitally connected, the potential for growth through network effects has made the platform model the most attractive way for businesses to create meaningful new value for customers. Today, I'm very pleased to be joined by our very own founder and CEO, Eric Joachimsteller. Hi there. Over the last 18 years, Eric has led Vivaldi in helping our clients build brands, uncover growth and innovation opportunities, and build uh, build out their opportunities in this digital age. Um, He brings to the table a unique mix of uh, consulting experience, uh, strategic mindset, academic rigor, and a lot of creativity. Thank you. and has a very strong passion for the topic of platforms. Yes. In this episode, we'll be discussing the, just the general nature of platforms and companies, how companies can finally tap into um, their potential. Yes. So maybe just to start, Eric, what is a platform? Oh, platform is uh, an amazing new opportunity. It's a new way of creating value for consumers or customers. So how does it really work? Ah, platforms, you need to start to think how we typically create value for consumers. Mm -hmm. For hundreds of years, we create value through what's called a value chain in a sequential step of activities from R&D, from manufacturing, from how we source products, how we market and sell products. We create a business, if you will, a company that, that, that adds value, that then delivers a product or a service of value to the consumer. Uh, and for which the consumer is willing to pay an extra price. So that's that's a whole, pipeline model. That's, that's the, the, the traditional approach. Differentiation, that's the world where marketers' role is to communicate out what product yes. is being offered. Okay. Yes. So what's the difference now with the platform model? No, platforms are very different. Platforms are not built through manufacturing, mm-hmm. not through that linear step. Platforms are built through interaction, through collaboration. Platforms facilitate an interaction, a connection, and through that interaction and connection, value is created for the consumer. Do you have an example to give to us? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, For example, I mean, I can many examples. Uh, uh, The the most valuable companies right now, uh, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, they're all platforms. Amazon have platform businesses, but also uh, any other companies you can imagine, Sephora, John, John Deere, and so many others are. So you mentioned Apple. How, how does the platform work? How does that actually fit yeah. your definition? Apple is a good example because we all know Apple very well, but uh, think of Apple. Apple, of course, has the iPhone and many devices, but the platform part of Apple is really the App Store. In the App Store, if you think, App Store is an easy way for me to make my iPhone useful. It's an easy way for me to to do a lot of new things. Apple started that only in 2011. That's why platforms are so recent. Uh, And and what what the value here is, is that Apple creates value for consumers. Very easy way of making your iPhone more valuable. But the platform part here is that on the other side of the platform, there are app developers that code, that write software, that, are, that write today more than 2 million apps that they post on, app, on, on the App Store. And that creates value also for the app developer because the app developer doesn't have to do marketing anymore. The app developer can focus on what they're really good at, namely creating awesome apps. So Apple has basically created a marketplace for developers on one end who can put up their apps. And as you say, they've um, removed the need for the developer themselves to market the products and, and build out a store. And on the other hand, you've got consumers who are able to download those apps. So that sounds very kind of tech enabled. And uh, you know, a lot of companies talk about apps, try to develop their own apps. Do you need to be a tech enabled company? Do you have to have to be in the software space in order to be a platform? No, uh, it is a fact 
that uh, these marketplaces, you call it, these platforms, actually started in the tech fact in the tech world. Salesforce started be even before Apple mm -hmm. in 2007 and is now a huge success for 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 Salesforce. But if over the years, especially over the last couple of years or three four years, traditional companies, traditional brands have realized they all need to build on the top of their existing businesses also a platform business. Can you give us an example? Yeah, uh, uh, think of one of the most uh, greatest brands and most traditional companies, uh, uh, John Deere. John Deere is a good example perhaps because John Deere has on one side farmers, which are their customers um, and farmers and on the other side John Deere has pesticides manufacturers, has um, um, fertilizer manufacturers, they have crop manufacturers like Monsanto, BASF and Bayer and, and, and many other uh, participants. And John Deere facilitates a platform where they bring together farmers on one side and those uh, manufacturers for all sorts of uh, uh, important uh, parts in order to make a farm really productive. Can you talk about how that value is created that you talk about? Yeah. The key to understanding platform is really to understand how platform is created. Because the platform is not created by John Deere alone, mm -hmm. not created by Bayer, not created by a Monsanto. The platform is actually created, the value, I'm sorry, is created by the farmers. Mm -hmm. Farmers share their data about their, about their farms, the productivity data, the soil conditions, the weather conditions, uh, when they seed it, all their practices. And because farmers collectively come together and share this data on a platform, it's a their digital platform uh, called the John Deere Open Platform, uh, the, the, uh, 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 John Deere can use this data and, and work together with manufacturers like Monsanto and says what would be the best crop, what would be the best time of fertilizing, how deep should you seed um, uh, your, your crop in order to optimize and maximize the productivity of the farm. So the value is created by farmers sharing uh, their experiences, their data, their productivity, their land data, if you will, with, with John Deere and that that is uh, that's how value is created. So what's exciting is it sounds like a lot of people are deriving value from the platform. You're talking a lot about you know different types of companies that can come in as partners onto the platform, and then all the individual farmers that are contributing data and then extracting value in terms of um, being able to garner a better yield for their land. Yeah, um, that's a lot of people to coordinate and to bring onto the platform. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about um, just how a company would go about um, building a platform? You've talked in the past, you've mentioned different examples of how companies have you know, nestled that um, initiative within yeah. the company or gone outside. Like how, do, how would a company actually go about doing that? Um, uh, an existing company that has an existing customer base, let's think of John Deere one more time, uh, uh, has this enormous benefit that they have a strong brand, they are trusted, and, mm -hmm. and farmers trust John Deere in, 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 in terms of their farm productivity. And, and, and the way you start is, is you build from that customer base. Uh, you think about how you can collaborate with customers, in this case farmers, and how can you, what would be the kind of interaction, the kind of data, the kind of exchanges you have with, with, with uh, the farmers that would really create value. Mm -hmm. You have to rethink totally how you think about it. The customer is no longer, the farmer in this case, is no longer the target that you sell a tractor to or a service warranty. You, you try to think of the customer from the customer's perspective and say, how do I enable productivity gains for that farm? And how do I, what can I do to facilitate that platform? Uh, who, do, who do I need to be? What are the participants that I need to have on that platform? Uh, who can I collaborate with? And what is the value creating interaction, the, what I call the core action that actually creates value? What data are useful for Monsanto? And how do I improve productivity? 
So that sounds like a very uh, big shift in mindset um, for an organization to take. Is that something that uh, an organization would do kind of within itself? Would it outsource that to a small group that was doing it outside? How, do, how did, have you seen organizations organize themselves in order to kind of make that um, mindset shift and then actually be able to create a platform? I think this is a very important point because we all lived all of our lives in our entire career in that pipeline world, in that linear process of how to add value, usually from our own functional perspective. I'm a marketing person, I know how to help marketing and build brands, let's say, or innovation perspective. And so the problem is that when you think of platforms, you can't think from your own perspective anymore. You need to think from that customer perspective. What drives productivity? What drives value for a consumer that owns an iPhone mm -hmm. rather than how do I add value along the pipeline? So it requires a mindset. My recommendation is you build um, a separate team that, that builds that platforms, the dynamics, makes it work. And the more the platform interacts or the more the participants interact on the platform, that creates that value. We call it network effect uh, uh, value. And, and, and once you have this working, you need to find a system of how you translate this to the existing or part of the organization, to the existing sales force. There are a number of examples now out there of companies that have rigorously or systematically taken the platform value and the ideas from the platform, platform thinking, the platform strategy, and adopted it in their companies, in their, in their existing uh, hierarchy and traditional organization. So you mentioned network effects. Can yeah. you explain a little bit more? Yeah, network effects is this most important part. It's, it's, a, it's a technical way of explaining what, how a platform creates value. A network effects happen when the product is more valuable because more users, more farmers or more iPhone users use the product. It's because of the network. Um, that means the more farmers are participating in the network, the more the data become valuable to every participant, to Monsanto, to John Deere, and it also becomes more valuable to every other farmer. So that's the network effect. And the beautiful part of the network effect if, is that network effects scale exponentially. So we are obviously big believers at Vivaldi in the power of platforms. Um, would you say that it's, this is an opportunity that exists for companies across industries, or are there specific spaces in which platforms have most potential? Um, right now, we are still in the early stages of that evolution, but we see very traditional companies. Think, for example, metal or steel manufacturing and steel distribution that have adopted platform, industrial gases, elevator companies uh, um, have adopted this. We are still practicing the various types of platforms. There is not just one type of platform, but this is something that is now going across industries and categories and is solving some amazingly important problems and challenges that companies, industries have and society at large has. Which kind of raises some interesting questions around because kind of these bigger problems that mm -hmm. companies are trying to solve, yeah. um, or that society in general is trying to solve, and how platforms can help serve that higher mm -hmm. purpose. Yeah. How do you connect that for an organization in terms of the vision that they have, the purpose that they serve, and then the platform that they're trying yeah. to build? I, let's go back to John Deere. Very simple example. If I'm a farmer, I am a John Deere customer. My brand relationship is with John Deere. Mm -hmm. One thing I want is, is that the machine to work very well. Mm -hmm. But I also realize that there is more than just a machine lumbering at seven miles per hour over my field. There is more to that. Of course, I want to have productivity of my land. That's a very specific goal as a farmer that I need to accomplish because I need to run my operation profitably. Now. If I participate in the platform and, 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 have, and share my data with other data, 
We know from research now that instead of improving my productivity by 10%, that goes from in a, in a specifically 7,850 hectares of cereals per, or cereal per hectare right now in American land, uh, if I just improve the 10%, that's one effect. But if I share the data through a platform thinking, the research shows that that number is actually a 10x number. I, do, I, I more than double the output of my, of my land, of my farm. And if every farmer would do that in America only, we would solve world hunger. It is so powerful. So yes, there is to the platform, there is an immediate productivity gain that I have for my farm, but the sharing has so much more powerful effects, these exponential network effects that allow me to really solve for something very big. The population in the world population is growing to 9.8 billion in the next uh, years to come. In order to do that, we need food consumption will double as well. Only in order to catch up with that food consumption, we would need to build platform businesses in the agriculture. And that's why it's happening already right there. So you talked about how um, that could tie very nicely to the brand yes. of a John Deere. How, how does branding change in the world of platforms? Oh, brands change in a, in a very significant way. That's an, an entire different uh, podcast that we should really explore <laughs> because brands no longer are it, brands no longer are merely um, devices or let's call it an, a, a means of creating attention a means of creating an image brands become now this this almost a trust reservoir mm -hmm. that enables the platform that allows part, uh, partners and farmers let's say in the in the John Deere example or, or manufacturers to operate and collaborate and create value for themselves and also for the larger good without a brand you you will have no platform and so not only you without a brand you will have no platform is also the platforms changes how you build brands number one for example you need to have a direct connection with the customer John Deere cannot just sell to the John Deere dealers. John Deere needs to have a relationship with customers. Number two, you need, you need the customers to connect with you, not just as a target of an advertising campaign, but as a participant, an active participant in value creation. That's a very different relationship. The relationship becomes much more intimate, much closer, and much more meaningful between a brand and the customer than we ever have imagined until today. So the role of the brand and just the availability that large companies who've been established for a while, that the fact that they have this asset is a huge advantage relative to, for example, a startup or somebody who's trying to get into the space and who maybe has figured out platform dynamics and can maybe um, kind of more easily create an organization that supports the platform dynamics. Yeah. On the flip side, you know, the companies you've mentioned are, are some of the larger incumbents in the space mm -hmm. um, in each of their categories. What other assets do they have? They've got their brands. What else do they have that can help them win in, the, in this new era? Yeah, uh, there are other assets that a company has. For example, um, uh, whether you're a smaller company or a larger company, there is a level of industry knowledge that you have. You have connection and relationships in the industry. Um, uh, if you are a steel manufacturer, you know the steel industry, you're in the trade shows, you know the distribution system, you know how the system works. A platform is not just in order to sell something to the consumer, to enable an entire ecosystem, we call it, an entire network of participants. And, and using that industry knowledge can help you to bring together a value-creating platform that, that, that helps and creates value for everyone. That's sort of two. Third, companies have technologies, existing technologies that allows them to actually build platforms that you don't have necessarily to, to shop around and buy something from, uh, from, from scratch. You actually have some existing assets from a technology perspective that, e that allows you to, to, to enter the platform uh, um, dynamics and success. 
Well, that's a very optimistic way to end this conversation because it means that if we do believe that any any platform, any business that's going to become a platform will become a platform, our you know viewers need to become that platform, or otherwise somebody else will take over in their space. Yes, um, that pretty much wraps up the time that we have with you, Eric. Today, yeah. is there kind of one parting thought that you want to leave our viewers with? Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, of course. Uh, my sentence perhaps is: platforms eat pipelines. Over time, platforms will be so powerful, they will, uh, uh, they will uh, uh, eat platforms. Thank you, Eric. If you want to get in touch, his email is ej at vivaldigroup.com. Thank you.